This lesson introduces you to the key concepts in service strategy. This lesson also focuses on the classification of services based on the customer's requirement. Let us define the objectives of this lesson in the next screen. After completing this lesson, you will be able to Describe the basics of value creation through services. Explain business case. In the next screen, let us understand utility and warranty. One of the key concepts in service strategy is to determine how to create service value. The two key elements that combine to provide service value are utility and warranty. Service utility is the functionality offered by the product or service from the customer perspective. Warranty is a promise that the product or service will meet agreed requirements. Utility is what the customer gets, whereas warranty is how service is delivered. Utility should meet the customer needs, that is, it should fit for purpose. Warranty is the ability of the service to operate reliably, that is, it should fit for use. There are three characteristics of warranty. Firstly, warranty should be provided in terms of availability, capacity of services. Secondly, warranty makes sure that customer assets continue to receive utility, even if degraded through major disruptions. Finally, warranty ensures security for value creating potential of customer assets. Utility increases performance average, whereas warranty reduces performance variation. Describing both service utility and service warranty enables the service providers to establish the value of the service and differentiate themselves from the competitors. It also helps to attach a meaningful price tag that a potential customer would be willing to pay for. In the next screen, let us understand the concept of utility and warranty more elaborately. The image illustrates how the two key elements combine to create value in IT services. Utility is perceived by the customer from the attributes of the service that have a positive effect on the performance of tasks associated with desired results. Removal or relaxation of constraints on performance is also perceived as a positive effect. It means that if you are able to support the performance of a customer's services or remove the challenges at the customer end, the service utility is on the higher side. Warranty is determined by four parameters. They are availability, capacity, continuity, and security. These parameters determine if the service is fit for use for a customer to achieve business outcomes. Suppose a customer wants to use email as a service. In this case, utility refers to the ability of the service to allow the customer to send and receive email. Warranty is derived from the positive effect of being available when needed, in sufficient capacity or magnitude, and dependable in terms of continuity and security. For example, if the email service is available 24-7, the warranty in this case should be to provide security so that nobody hacks your account. In the next screen, we will focus on service assets. Utility of a service is delivered through service assets. Service assets include resources and capabilities. Both are equally important and a service provider cannot exist without them. Resources are the tangible assets of an organization that can be purchased to deliver the service. Capabilities, on the other hand, are the intangible assets of an organization and cannot be purchased, but have to be developed and maintained over a time span. Resources are the direct inputs for the production of goods. Capabilities have the ability to coordinate, control, and deploy resources to create services. Resources include the IT infrastructure, people, and applications. Capabilities are basically driven by experience based on information, knowledge intensive, and nested within an organization's management, people, and processes. The nine types of assets are shown on the screen. Let us do a quick recall of service utility and warranty. Values are defined by the customers. The customer will select a service or product that represents the best mix of features at the price they are willing to pay. Value changes over time and circumstances. The service needs and values change as the customer faces new challenges to adapt to their changing environment. 
value needs to be defined in terms of three areas, business outcomes, customers' preferences, and customers' perception. In the next screen, we will further discuss value creation. To understand the value of IT, the following questions need to be answered. What service does IT provide? Service from the IT perspective should be linked to specific business activities and outcome of customers. What did the services achieve? The customers will identify what they were able to do with the service and how important was the service to them and their organization. What is the cost of a particular service? When a customer compares the service cost with the service that enabled them to achieve their desired outcomes, they will be able to determine how valuable the service is. In the next screen, let us discuss the factors that influence customer perception of value. Perceptions are influenced by service features, present or past experiences with similar features, and relative competency, self-image, peers, and position in the market. In the next screen, we will further discuss customer perception of value. Customer point is the reference value and is based on do-it-yourself or DIY strategy. The positive difference is based on the perceived additional benefits and gains provided by the service provider. The negative difference is what the customer would lose by investing in the service. The net difference is the actual perception that the customer has of the service offered after ignoring the negative difference. The economic value is the sum of reference value and net difference. Next, we will focus on how service management enables business outcomes. Service management uses its service assets to deliver a service that meets the business outcomes of the customer. Service management is a set of organizational capabilities specialized in providing value to customers in the form of services. The capabilities interact with each other to function as a system for creating value. Service management acts as an operating system for service assets in effectively deploying them to provide services. Service assets are the source of value and customer assets are the recipients. Service management enables the service assets to perform according to customer requirements while identifying and reducing the impact of constraints on the service assets. IT service management does this by managing IT capabilities and resources. This is done either internally or through the support of external service providers and technology vendors. Service management enables the service assets to achieve desired business outcomes. From a business point of view, IT service management enables the delivery of services which are used to achieve business outcomes. In the next screen, we will focus on the relationship between a service provider business unit and business outcomes of the customer. Organizations are becoming less focused on the IT infrastructure and more on how to automate end-to-end -end business processes and deliver business services. The challenge is to understand the operational objectives of the business process and translate that into activities that can be provided by the IT infrastructure. Overcoming this problem is the objective of the processes. The given image illustrates the relationship between the service provider, the business unit, and the customer's business outcomes. In this image, an IT service provider delivers services to an internal business unit which enables it to achieve its desired business outcomes. In this image, the nature of the business outcomes determines what customer assets the business unit will need. The service provider uses the service assets to deliver a service that meets the needs of the business unit. In order to achieve the outcomes, the business unit needs a minimum level of service. The performance potential of the service indicates what utility and warranty the service will have. This will indicate, in business unit terms, the performance that the service will be capable of. The business unit can then determine whether that will be suitable to enable its customer assets to produce the desired level of outcomes. The more the utility and warranty, the higher the performance potential. Next, we will focus on service packages. No two customers will have the same needs. There is no one-size-fits-all service. Any IT service provider will have multiple customers with different needs and requirements. 
IT service providers meet their customer requirements through the concept of service packages. Click the email service icon to understand service packages, service level packages, and how they are used to offer various choices and values to customers. Let us take email service as an example of the packages provided by an Internet service provider. This service may be offered as two different service level packages suiting the business needs of two different customers. Suppose one is a smaller organization with less than 20 employees and another is a corporate customer. For the smaller organization, email service is used only during office hours and the service level package might be for online support during 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. But for a corporate, a more exhaustive service level package is required because there will be more users using it 24 hours a day and hence 24-7 support is required. Further, the corporate customer will have needs for a different response and resolution time too. This also will differ from the service level package being offered to a particular customer. Let us discuss service package in detail in the next screen. A service package provides a detailed description of a package of bundled services available to be delivered to customers. It defines the level of utility and warranty provided by the service package. The service package includes the core services provided, any supporting services provided or enabling service packages, any enhancing service packages, which are often the excitement factors used as differentiators, and service level packages. The service level packages can be at various levels as shown on the screen. Next, we will focus on business case. A business case is a documented justification which demonstrates that by adding a new service, the service provider can attract many new customers who are willing to invest in the new service. A business case is prepared to evaluate the business viability of providing a new service. It uses qualitative and quantitative terms and links business impact or benefits to the defined business objectives. A business case is used as a decision support and planning tool that projects the likely consequences of a business action, justification for a significant item of expenditure, report that includes information about costs, benefits, options, issues, risks, and possible problems. In the next screen, we will focus on business case structure. A business case structure includes an introduction that addresses the business objectives, methods and assumptions which define the boundaries of the business case, business impacts in terms of financial and non-financial impacts and recommendations in terms of any specific actions, risks, and contingencies that can impact the objectives. In the next screen, we will focus on risk. Risk is defined as uncertainty that can have a positive or negative outcome. If the outcome of a risk is positive, it helps to fulfill the business objectives of an organization. Such risks are called opportunities. If the outcome of a risk is negative, it is called a threat. Managing risk requires identification and control of the exposures to risk, which may have an impact on achieving business objectives. There are two distinct phases of risk, which are risk analysis and risk management. Risk analysis involves gathering information about risk exposure so that the organization can make timely decisions and manage risk appropriately. A risk is a possible event that could cause harm or loss or affect the ability to achieve objectives. The technique used to manage a risk is called risk management. Managing risk involves risk assessment and risk analysis. The aim of risk management is to reduce the impact of a negative outcome and increase the impact of a positive outcome. Next, we will focus on service management technology and automation. Automation can have significant impact on the performance of service assets such as management, organization, people, process, knowledge and information. Automation is considered to improve the utility and warranty of services. Automation provides real-time and historical data for analysis, correlates data from multiple devices, analyzes service impact for prioritization of incidents, problems and change tickets, and 
optimizes service performance, for example, by adjusting capacity based on demand. In the next screen, we will focus on automation benefits. The automation of service processes helps improve the quality of service, reduce costs, and reduce risks by reducing complexity and uncertainty and by efficiently resolving trade-offs. Some of the areas where service management can benefit from automation are design and modeling, typically a what-if analysis, pattern recognition and analysis of service issues, detection and monitoring of events and alerts, an online service catalog and optimization of services and underlying technology, classification, prioritization, and routing of incident, problem, and change tickets. In the next screen, we will discuss service management tools. The service management tools include the following. Service Desk Self-Help, which is a web front end offering a menu-driven range of self-help and service requests with a direct interface into the back-end process handling software. A workflow or process engine which allows responsibilities, activities, timescales, escalation paths, and alerting to be predefined and then automatically managed. It is usually a part of the ticketing tools used for service management. An Integrated Configuration Management System, or CMS, where configuration items, relationships, records related to incidents, problems, known errors, and change are stored. In Discovery and Deployment Tool, CMS data is populated and can be verified. It also assists in license management and deployment of new software at target locations. Another tool is Remote Control, or commonly known as Remote Desktops, which allows relevant support groups to take control of the user desktops. Diagnostic scripts, utilities, reporting, and dashboards are also examples of automation enabling service management. Let us summarize what we have learnt in this lesson. Utility and warranty are the two components of service value. Service assets deliver utility of a service and include resources and capabilities. A service package provides a detailed description of a package of bundled services available for customers. A business case is used as a decision support and planning tool that projects the likely consequences of a business action. Next, we will focus on the third lesson, Service Strategy Processes.